Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here with VideoCopilot.net and welcome to another very exciting tutorial with a very exciting and familiar introduction. Now, today we're going to be taking a look at creating a cool title treatment like this. Okay, so we basically have some text and it begins to break up and uh, shatter into a bunch of little pieces. And if we look closely at the effect, we can see it begins to deplete at the top and move down through the title. So we're actually using a similar technique as seen in our 3D ball dispersion tutorial where each part of the animation is on a separate cascading layer. So we'll get into all those details and uh, should be a lot of fun. First thing we're going to do, create a new composition, 960, 480, and all this looks good. We'll hit OK. By the way, to show frames, hold down Control and uh, click through so you can see seconds or frames. I saw a question out there. There's your answer. Now we're going to take the text tool and we're going to type in here, mm-hmm. Video Copilot, excuse me, and uh, we'll scale it up here, center it, and you can use any font. You basically want something kind of bulky, something thick. We're using Bank Gothic, and uh, looking good. That's pretty good right there. We'll continue. Uh, we want to give it somewhat of a metal look, so we'll take this metal texture, we'll put it below our title. And then we're going to go to the track mat. If you hit F4, we can set it to alpha mat. And that uses the alpha for the text layer or whatever layer is above it for its own. Then we'll add a little contrast with a curves adjustment. And uh, we'll zoom in here, turn that up, bring that down. So we're just trying to make it look a little bit more textured. We can even scale the image down. So we'll go ahead hit S and we'll just scale it down a bit and just shift it till we find something interesting looks pretty good now I want it to be more on the dark side um, the dark side where have I heard that before I don't know uh, we'll go ahead make it blue by just you know turning up the blue channel just a little bit there okay perfect then we'll duplicate our text control D turn that one on. We'll make it black. So if we select it, just click black. Then we'll choose, uh, let's see, we'll come over to the effects. Oh, we're going to look for the bevel alpha. Look, it's already typed in. Here is a secret, is when I create the tutorials, I usually run through like the first minute or two so it seems official and then the quality depletes rather quickly at that point. So <laughs> a little bit of information there. So we'll bring out the bevel alpha, drop that on the text. We're going to put the light angle at the top and we'll turn up the intensity a little bit and then we'll duplicate the layer or actually we'll set it to add so that it blends with our background and then we'll duplicate it, control D and we'll flip the angle and bring the thickness down so it's just a little bit of counter shading, maybe bring the intensity down a touch, you know, something like that. Um, then we'll take all of these layers, hold down shift select them and we'll choose layer pre-compose and uh, we'll call this text title and hit OK. Now to achieve the shattering effect we're going to be using a plugin called Pixel Poly and we've used it a couple of times before and it's a pretty cool plugin. We'll drop that onto our title and it sort of shatters everything into a bunch of pieces and we're going to play around with the settings here. So first let's set the gravity to zero so we can actually see what's going on. What I want to do is bring the force down to a negative number so that the pieces sort of collapse and you know do something a little more interesting. We can also turn up the direction randomness so that the pieces kind of go all over the place and maybe the speed randomness up as well so they're not all moving at the same rate. Now the grid spacing will make the pieces larger or smaller, like if we set it down to two, we could almost create a sand effect, which uh, could be interesting. I think we'll set it to about 16 or 17, so the pieces are um, not too large. 
Um, maybe we'll set the spin amount up to two so that they really just kind of fly away. Maybe the gravity to a negative number so they kind of go upwards. At least that's what we did in the original example. Okay, so now the key here is to duplicate this layer several times to create that cascading effect as we did in the previous tutorial. Now, in order to make this effect more random and sporadic, I want to add some expressions to some of the values. So I'll alt click on the force and we're going to come, we're going to type wiggle parentheses zero comma, I don't know, 25. And what that says is to create a random value that's give or take 25 from the initial value, which is negative 49. So if we click away, it creates a value of negative 55 instead of 49. And we're going to also add that to some of the other settings. Uh, first, we'll go down here to the speed randomness. Maybe we'll copy that same expression and possibly the direction randomness, except we'll only do it about 15 and maybe the grid spacing and we'll set that to maybe uh, maybe seven. So the settings are going to stay relatively similar but if I duplicate the layer you can see now I have two copies that are just slightly different. So when they overlay each other you can see that there's a lot more detail there. So moving on to the technique that we used in the previous tutorial, I'm going to go ahead, take the rectangle mask tool, and we're going to draw a selection around a small part of the top of the title. So we'll move that down, maybe make it a little bit bigger. Okay. So what I need to do is animate the mask. So I'll hit M, set a keyframe and I want to move forward to frame 11. And that's because I want to create 12 copies. Now if you want the animation to be slower, just use more frames. But we'll go ahead and start it at frame 11. Now I'll go ahead and shut off the effects by toggling the switch. And then I'm going to move the mask down. So we'll double click on it and slide it down so that we just select the bottom portion. So now we have just a basic little animation. So now what we need to do is make 12 copies. We're on frame 11 plus frame 0, 12. So we'll go control D, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then we'll select all these, control D, and now we have 12 copies. Now in the previous tutorial, we used a script that will offset the layers by one frame. So we run a script, click on sequencer, and click open, and it'll ask us um, how many frames to offset, and we'll just hit OK. And then what we're going to do is move forward to frame 11 when everything is on and uh, we'll hit M and what we want to do is shut off the mask animation. So we'll just click on the stopwatch and drag down until we shut off all of the animated masks. So now what we've created is a bunch of layers that represent one slice of the entire title. Very good. Now we can go ahead, turn the effects back on here. And so if we look at this, we can see it sort of breaks up, although we are missing the initial title. Now this is breaking up from the bottom to the top, so I want to switch that around. So we'll select the bottom layer, hold down shift, select the top layer, and we'll run that script again. And uh, we'll just hit OK and that will switch the order. So the order that you select them is the order that they will run. Now we do need to create the title before it breaks up. So we'll just take one of the copies, hit control D, and uh, we'll change it to red so that we can see it's a different layer. And we'll hit M. Let's move this up here, maybe shut the effects off, solo the layer. And basically what we need to do is animate it from being on to being off. So we'll just scale that mask up and then I'll go ahead and set a keyframe for the path. Set it at the beginning there, frame zero. Move forward to frame 11 and then animate it until it's off. So just like that. And we look at the animation. We have the effect of it uh, breaking up into pieces. 
So this is the core animation, and the next few steps are going to be sort of enhancing it, adding some glows, and uh, all that good stuff. So let's move on to that right now. Okay, the next thing I want to do is add some more detail. So what I'm going to do is take all these layers here and duplicate them. So we'll hit Edit, Duplicate, and we'll move them up here to the top. And I also want to change the label color to maybe uh, yellow so that we can differentiate them from this set. Now I'm also going to move them over to the beginning of the animation, so I'm going to hit Alt Home. And uh, what I want to do is give it a different animation or a different look than the other layers beneath it. So first I'll just take one of the layers, solo it, and hide the mask, and we're just going to look at this layer by itself. I'm going to add a blur effect, effect, blur, fast blur, and we're going to animate it. So we'll set a keyframe at frame zero, and we'll also set it to be vertical and repeat edge pixels. And we'll move forward to about frame 15 or so, and we'll set the blurriness up to about 100. So what we're doing is gradually blurring the layers vertically as the animation goes on. Now I also want to select the first keyframe and hit F9 so it's a little smoother going out. Now I want to copy this effect to all my other yellow layers so I'll hit E, select the fast blur, choose edit, copy, select other layers in the yellow group and choose edit, paste. So now the layers have that blur so now I want to offset them again so I'll select the bottom layer, hold down shift, select the top layer, we'll choose file, script, run script, and we'll run the sequencer script again, and uh, offset by one frame. We'll unsolo the layer, and uh, we just need to slide it back over so it lines up with the original animation. And so now, we have uh, you know a little bit of blur going on there, and it just looks a little bit more intricate. I think I may even change the transfer mode to add, and that'll just make it a little brighter. I might even take the other layers and uh, also set those to add so that the animation is nice and bright as it breaks off. All right, we'll go ahead and preview it. Looking pretty good. Let's go and add some glow. So I'm going to create a new adjustment layer and we'll also create a background solid that's black. So background, OK, and we'll move that to the bottom. Now we'll take this top layer and we'll choose Effect, Stylize, Glow. Now this is going to help hide that sharp line that we're seeing from where the layers break from one to the other. Now I'm going to go ahead, set the glow to be vertical, and we'll also set it to be AB colors instead of original colors, and we can set those here. So we'll do like a blue and a dark blue. And we'll turn up the intensity and uh, maybe the radius will bring that down to somewhat of a short value. Just enough to kind of blend the animation. So that looks pretty good. I'm also going to take the glow and duplicate it, control D, and just change the settings a bit. So we'll turn the radius up this time and just make it look, you know, a little bit more interesting. Um, I may want to keyframe this one on. So we'll go ahead and set the intensity down to maybe 1 set a keyframe and then move forward to the animation after it's done going through and then set it up to maybe about four. Pretty good and what the heck we'll duplicate it again this time we won't animate it and instead of vertical we'll set it to horizontal so it's just a regular glow we'll make it nice and big um, maybe even darker blue All right, so that's looking pretty good. Let's take our entire title, so comp five, and drop it into a new comp. And I'll just show you a few of the things that I did, maybe add some camera shake. By the way, to make the title look a little more 3D, uh, what I did is I took the bottom copy, the red copy, I just duplicated it, and then the first copy just got scaled down a little bit, and then we add, uh, some contrast. I mean just simple little things like that just to give it a little bit of depth. 
Um, and uh, yeah, so we'll go back here. Let's see, we'll unsolo those. And now I want to go ahead and add some camera shake. Now I have a preset called After Shake where you can get on the website, but I'll just show you a quick way. Um, I like to do it sometimes. I just create a null object, add a slider control, and this is going to be the uh, shake. Then I'll hit P, bring up the position, alt click on it, type uh, wiggle, parentheses uh, 7 or 8, comma, and then we pick whip that value. And then in parentheses there, so just like that, click away. And uh, what we're going to do is uh, turn the value up as it starts to break up. So we'll set a keyframe right before, and then maybe we'll set it to uh, 40, and then uh, you know turn it down to maybe 10. So it starts shaking and then kind of goes away. Um, yeah, that looks good. So then we'll parent it to that null. And we also want to turn on the motion blur. So we'll click on motion blur also for the comp. So when it begins shaking, it'll uh, have a little bit of motion blur there. And finally, just uh, maybe we'll add a quick box blur as the pieces kind of fade away. So we'll turn that on and just uh, turn this up to a lot, maybe 40 or so like that. And that way it just kind of uh, depletes away. I mean, that was just something I did. You don't have to do it or you could do something else. Now to fix this problem where the pieces go away, we like to use a motion tile and uh, put that down there. So basically what's happening is the layers being shifted. So we'll mirror the edges and then extend the edges. You can also you know, scale it in or, or crop it too. One thing I will do actually to serve as a dual purpose, so I'll create a solid and uh, we're going to add a plugin called Optical Flares. It's uh, a plugin by Video Copilot for creating some cool lens flares. We'll go into the options. Now we can create our own lens flare or we could come over to uh, the presets. We'll click on Motion Graphics and we'll use this uh, 50 millimeter prime here. Now you can go through and you know just hide certain elements or, or do whatever. Um, pretty easy to use, very similar to After Effects interface. And again, that plugin is available from videocopilot.net, uh, 125 bucks, comes with uh, tons of presets and tutorials and uh, all that jazz. So got my commercial out of the way and uh, we'll just come down here and hit OK. And so now we have this lens flare. I want to go ahead and animate the lens flare with the depletion of the title. So we'll go forward here, move the lens flare just about to that point, and uh, we'll parent it to the null object because we added that camera shake. And uh, we'll also maybe just scale it up just a little bit. And what I want to do is animate the position with the cascading effect. So as it moves down, I also want to animate the lens flare. So maybe it's helping to uh, burn it away. Then we'll also animate the brightness. So we'll keyframe uh, the brightness here in the middle. And then we'll go out to the beginning here. We'll set it down to zero. And uh, also animate it down to zero afterwards, maybe a little longer. And another thing we can do is uh, maybe brighten it up at that midpoint. I like to add some contrast to the flare. Now there's this big ring that usually looks good, but uh, I'm going to probably just go into the optical flares interface, find that element, uh, these two iris, you can see the uh, preview there, and just hide these, and hit OK. So now they're not there. Um, I don't know who made that preset, but guy needs to uh, figure something out. Um, OK, looking good. Maybe even add a touch more blue into this flare. You know, we can play with the color settings, but you know, that does a pretty nice job. Just gives it a nice uh, polished look as it sort of burns away. And uh, we come to the end of the tutorial every time and I have no idea uh, what we should be talking about because uh, we're pretty much done. But anyway, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Be sure to check out the website, uh, tons of tutorials. We have the forum and of course the uh, blog, uh, a lot of cool information there. We've got the blog show coming back a little bit more. I'm Andrew Kramer and we'll see you next time.